Now, if you didn't make these movies for the critics, and I know you didn't make them for the fans, who exactly did you make these things for? So thank you, Bounding Into Comics, for giving me something to laugh about and an article to talk about. As we see Kathleen Kennedy, last critic, says we didn't make movies for them. <laughs> now, I just want to i gonna go through a little bit. Maybe this is taken a little bit out of context, but I think in the, as Facebook says, the meta contextual, we can take this and look at it from, it seems like she's, she's saying it addressing, in my mind, the rise of Skywalker. So let's just see what she had to say and then we'll, we'll go through a little bit here. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy recently did an interview where she laughed at critics and definitively declared, Yes, we did not make the movies for them. I see, I see. Interesting. She apparently did an interview with Tia A. Smith, the CEO and executive producer of Talent Soul, whatever. She did somebody else's podcast or YouTube channel. And I guess they were talking about a movie I know, a movie from a long time ago that nobody's probably seen. I couldn't tell you where to see it if you wanted to. The Color Purple. I'm pretty sure... Um, that who uh, Oprah won an Oscar for it? Maybe I don't. I don't really know. I don't know if I've ever seen that movie. Uh, but it was a Steven Spielberg production, and I guess there was criticism about it. I don't know. I don't know why they're talking about a movie from 1985. Like, I guess she produced it. That's this is this is a fact that we know is that Kennedy produced it. But when she was. She clearly pivoted to generalities around criticism. And this is what she says. She says, there's always going to be, be people when you make something that's somewhat controversial that are just flat out not going to like what you were doing. And we didn't make the movie for them. Ultimately, it's their response is just to cut it off and not even try. And you know, so often, especially you see it today, <laughs> Can you speak English, lady? Criticism like that sometimes comes before people have even seen something. They haven't even experienced it. It's just something they might have heard or they're jumping on the bandwagon of something that they think they might believe. I don't know what you're going to do about that ultimately. I, I don't know what you do about that ultimately is what she said. And I just go, lady, what are you talking about? I don't even understand... Of course, controversial. Explain to me what's controversial about Star Wars. Star Wars is a, is a franchise that's been around for like 40 years that all you had to do was make some new, you had stuff you could have worked with. You act like there's no source material. You banish the entire uh, extended universe into non-canon so that you don't have to use it. And then you'd go and cherry pick what you want from it. You could have made a really good trilogy if you just went with the Heir to the Empire, the Thrawn series, and you didn't do that. But what you did do is had your cake. You tried to have your cake and you tried to have it. And you tried to have your cake and eat it too. So let's take a look at Rotten Tomatoes because I just want to point this out. Force Awakens, a garbage pile movie by J.J. Abrams. Ninety-three percent, and I understand a hundred thousand audience score. I don't. I, I don't. I don't believe that. Like it's. It's a competent movie, I'll say that. But it's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a reboot of New Hope. And if you've seen New Hope and you love New Hope, you don't need The Force Awakens. It's just not a movie I need to see. I'm never gonna watch this movie again. The, after the first time I saw it, I was like, eh, they just redid New Hope and not as well. So why would I wanna watch this again? Now let's go to the most controversial. So controversial, you, you subverted our expectations, Kathleen. Congratulations. The Last Jedi. The, <laughs> and this is the start of the culture wars. I will go back and say this is the start of where they started treating fans like cons buy our newest product, shill. Just buy it. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't care about it. Just pay for it. Don't think about it consume so we have 91% from the critics and 42% from the audience so if we let 
back to look 93% force awakens 91% last Jedi pretty sure the critics are with you on this they like these movies that you so uh, that you claim are like oh I'm being criticized for right um what's the dead dumb Star Wars movie that I can't stand that people like seem to think is good but is not uh, we can go back to the other one uh, I liked Star Wars Visions that was new but here we're looking at some of these what's the one I was thinking of not the old ones either the old ones never really got a fair shot movies there can't be 161 I I'll think of it later but anyway let's go to Rise of Skywalker now here's the one where she took criticism why did they take criticism and why did the fans like seem to like this one better I mean Ultimately, they retconned everything to the point of oblivion. If you were looking for a mindless flick with some okay visuals because you spent $250 million, yeah, it's all right. It was a non-offensive movie. Uh, Last Jedi was specifically offensive to people, but Rise of the Skywalker was just retconning. You, you thought you were doing what the fans wanted, was trying to fix the disaster that Ryan Johnson ended up making and here's let's just look at rogue one rouge one a star wars story notice there's no more a star wars stories oh look at that the critics like that one too 84 percent another terrible movie that was an abomination you destroyed the uh director who was on it and had it reshot gareth edwards had it completely reshot there's stuff in the trailer that's not even in the movie that clearly got reshot that didn't make it any better it's not a good movie no one's gonna go back and say like i love this movie oh and let's take let's check out solo solo uh is that a, it was a star wars story a there you go a star wars story 70 percent still favorable from the critics right so you have the shill media giving you good reviews except for the one where you retcon <laughs> you did what they what the critics didn't want so for the first time you did something the critics didn't want which was retcon this <laughs> and even the critic consensus is stupid uh from a frustrating lack of imagination but concludes this beloved saga with fan focused devotion yeah you didn't like it because they focused on the fans and guess what they made a crappy movie so for her to come back and be like i don't make it for the critics clearly you cared what the critics said and the only reason why in rise of the skywalker you decided to go backwards was because you had a revolt on your hands based on what happened with the last jedi 42 percent fan score and the box office was lower than the previous movie which wasn't supposed to be so here you have this person just demolishing star wars and then she's gonna laugh at that the fact that she who's criticizing her like where we just went through four movies where she didn't get any any criticism and the only time she does get criticism for a movie is specifically because she tried to retcon and fix all of the problems with last jedi just absolutely absurd so thank you bounding into comics and let's give a shout out to this writer here who wrote a ad fill <laughs> that was a lot of ads john f trent thank you sir for bringing this to our attention i just think it's hysterical how clueless and how uh, clued out some of these people are like where are you getting criticism from who's criticizing you other than the fans the fans care and the fans consume your products if you do a good job they're gonna they're, they're gonna they're gonna consume it they're gonna pay for it they're gonna buy the toys they're gonna do all that other, other stuff just look at what you're doing with the Eternals and look at what you did with Shang-Chi. Is anybody buying those toys or any of the Star Wars new stuff toys? No, not at all. Here's one more point I want to make. So she, to conclude the question, Kennedy reveals she makes movies to try to change people's minds. She explained, you try to make movies like this that create the conversation and change a mind or two and that's good and that's all you really hope for. Now, again, I'm going to try not to take this out of context. I think she's specifically speaking about the color purple, right? What exactly, from a movie that I never watched, 
that is directed by, you know, arguably one of the greatest directors of all time, Steven Spielberg. So I'm pretty sure it's a good movie, and I'm pretty sure people liked it because I'm pretty sure people want Oscars. So who's criticizing The Color Purple? I mean, do I have to bring it up? My point, though, is what? whose minds are you trying to change with these movies? Like, what's the what's the point? I don't understand... Like, why can't, if, if you're picking up a, like, wh whose mind is Star Wars trying to change? It's about space wizards, right? The color purple, 1985, 81%. No one's criticizing this. What are you talking about? Where is their criticism? You know, it's a landmark a, a historic movie, I guess. It spans 40 years about, oh, it's Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, I was pretty sure that Oprah was in it too. Am I uh, confused? I could no. Oprah's in it. I don't know who won anything on any of these things. I'm not like an Oscar person, but bl clearly people like this movie. So, where are you talking about criticism? And then what are you? What's the conversation? I don't understand that slavery was bad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a hundred percent of people can agree with that. I don't really understand. What, what, who, what, whose mind are you trying to change? I thought they were trying to make a contextually, historically accurate movie. That's what it seems like me, where they're trying to show you the abuse and bigotry in the South. That makes sense to me, right? And it's based on a novel, right? So I, I, I don't get it. It's just an argument that does not need to be made. These people are on a different planet. Preferably they were on Hoth so they could freeze and get a real idea of how to survive because <laughs> this makes no sense a anyway and, and i guess <laughs> i don't know wait then the ceo had something to say too about disney influencing the world in instead of tearing them apart and you know you've got three people here who've attacked the fans you have pedro pascal kathleen kennedy calling the fans man babies calling them losers, calling anybody who voted for anything that they don't agree with is losers. Like, I just don't understand. So I think it's funny. Hollywood clearly doesn't have a clue of what they're talking about. They want to bring the country back together and unite them under a common vision of Disney. <laughs> so let's just banish the United States and just have the United States of Disney, right? Is that what you're saying, Bob Chapek? Ah, oh, exhausting. Just dealing with these people. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you uh, get a, uh, we get a like or subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it. I hope we earn that subscription this time. And be sure to check out our full length audio podcast. Uh, more details than any other video that you could watch. Uh, comment below. Do you agree that Disney is trying to take over the world? I think they are, but they might be failing because they don't know how to put out good material. So anyway, that's all you hear from me. <sighs> I'm already on to the next one.